The Xinjiang conflict is an ongoing separatist conflict in the People's Republic of China's far west province of Xinjiang. Uyghur separatists and independence movements claim that the region, which they refer to as East Turkestan, is not a part of China, but that the Soviet-supported Second East Turkestan Republic was incorporated by the PRC in 1949 and has since been under Chinese occupation. The East Turkestan independence movement is led by Turkic Islamist militant organizations, most notably the East Turkestan Islamic Movement, against the national government in Beijing. History The area known as Xinjiang had been a protectorate of China as early as 60 BC during the Han Dynasty when it was part of the protectorate of the Western regions and also a protectorate of Tang Dynasty China when it was part of the protectorate general to pacify the West, though there are numerous periods of independence from China. The historical area of what is modern-day Xinjiang consisted of the distinct areas of the Tarim Basin and Dzung area, and was originally populated by Indo-European Tocharian and Ironic Saka peoples who practiced the Buddhist religion. The area was subjected to Turkification and Islamification at the hands of invading Turkic Muslims during the Islamicization and Turkicization of Xinjiang. In the 18th century the Qing dynasty reorganized the territory as a province, Xinjiang. Previous Uprisings the Xinjiang Wars were a series of armed conflicts which took place in the early and mid-20th century, during the warlord era of the Republic of China, and during the Chinese Civil War, which saw the establishment of the People's Republic of China. The wars also played an important role in the East Turkestan independence movement. After the establishment of the Soviet Union, many Uyghurs who studied in Soviet Central Asia added Russian suffixes to Russify their surnames and make them look Russian. Urban Uyghurs sometimes select Russian names when naming their children, in cities such as Karame and Yuromki. The Soviet Union supported the Uyghur Second East Turkestan Republic in the Uli Rebellion against the Republic of China. Many of the Turkic peoples of the Uli region of Xinjiang had close cultural, political, and economic ties with the Russian Empire and then the Soviet Union. Many of them were educated in the Soviet Union and a community of Russian settlers lived in the region. As a result, many of the Turkic rebels fled to the Soviet Union and obtained Soviet assistance in creating the Xinjiang Turkic People's Liberation Committee in 1943 to revolt against Kuomintang rule during the Ili Rebellion. The pro-Soviet Uyghur who later became leader of the revolt and the Second East Turkestan Republic, Riyam Jinkasim, was Soviet educated and described as Stalin's man, and as a communist-minded progressive. According to her autobiography, Dragon Fighter, One Woman's Epic Struggle for Peace with China, the Uyghur activist Rebia Kadir's father served with pro-Soviet Uyghur rebels under the Second East Turkestan Republic in the Ili Rebellion in 1944 Euro 1946 using Soviet assistance and aid to fight the Republic of China government under Chiang Kai-shek. Kadir and her family were close friends with white Russian exiles living in Xinjiang and Kadir recalled that many Uyghurs thought Russian culture was more advanced than that of the Uyghurs and they respected the Russians a lot. Immediate Causes Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch speculate that Uyghur resentment towards repression of Uyghur culture may explain some of the ethnic riots that have occurred in Xinjiang during the People's Republic of China period. Conversely, some Han Chinese opponents of the movement are unhappy at being, in their perspective, treated as second-class citizens by PRC policies, in which many of the ethnic autonomy policies are discriminatory against them. Some go so far as to posit that since previous Chinese dynasties owned Xinjiang before the Uyghur Empire, the region belongs to them as opposed to the Uyghurs. Supporters of the movement, on the other hand, have labeled Chinese rule in Xinjiang, as Chinese imperialism. Uyghur nationalist historians such as Turgun Almas claim that Uyghurs were distinct and independent from Chinese for 6,000 years, and that all non-Uyghur peoples are non-indigenous immigrants to Xinjiang. However, the Han Dynasty established military colonies and commanders to control Xinjiang from 120 BCE, while the Tang Dynasty also controlled much of Xinjiang until the Anlushan Rebellion. Chinese historians refute Uyghur nationalist claims by pointing out the 2,000-year history of Han settlement in Xinjiang, documenting the history of Mongol, Kazakh, Uzbek, Manchu, Hui, 
Xibo indigenes in Xinjiang, and by emphasizing the relatively late westward migration of the Huagai people from Mongolia the 9th century. The name Uga was associated with the Buddhist people in the Tarim Basin in the 9th century, but completely disappeared by the 15th century, until it was revived by the Soviet Union in the 20th century. Uga nationalists often incorrectly claim that 5% of Xinjiang's population in 1949 was Han, and that the other 95% was Uga, erasing the presence of Kazakhs, Hwes, Mongols, Ksibes and others, and ignoring the fact that Hans were around one-third of Xinjiang's population in 1800, during the time of the Qing dynasty. Uga separatist activist Rebia Kadir claims Yurumki is Uga land. The name Yurumki came from the Dzongar Uyurut language. Professor of Chinese in Central Asian History at Georgetown University, James A. Millward wrote that foreigners often mistakenly think that Yurumki was originally a Uga city and that the Chinese destroyed its Uga character and culture. However, Yurumki was founded as a Chinese city by Han and Hui, and it is the Ugas who are new to the city. While a few people try to give a misportrayal of the historical Qing situation in light of the contemporary situation in Xinjiang with Han migration, and claim that the Qing settlements and state farms were an anti uka plot to replace them in their land, Professor James A. Millward pointed out that the Qing agricultural colonies in reality had nothing to do with Uga and their land, since the Qing banned settlement of Han in the Uga Tarim Basin and in fact directed the Han settlers instead to settle in the non Uga Dzungaria and the new city of Yurumki. So that the state farms which were settled with 155,000 Han Chinese from 1760 to 1830 were all in Dzungaria and Yurumki, where there was only an insignificant amount of Ugas, instead of the Tarim Basin oases. Han and Hui mostly live in northern Xinjiang and are separated from areas of historical Uga dominance south of the Tian Shan Mountains, where Ugas account for about 90% of the population. At the start of the 19th century, 40 years after the Qing reconquest, there were around 155,000 Han and Hui Chinese in northern Xinjiang and somewhat more than twice that number of Ugas in southern Xinjiang. A census of Xinjiang under Qing rule in the early 19th century tabulated ethnic shares of the population as 30% Han and 60% Turkic, while it dramatically shifted to 6% Han and 75% Uga in the 1953 census, however a situation similar to the Qing era demographics with a large number of Han has been restored as of 2000 with 40.57% Han and 45.21% Uga. Professor Stanley W. Tubbs noted that today's demographic situation is similar to that of the early Qing period in Xinjiang. In northern Xinjiang, the Qing brought in Han, Hui, Uga, Ksibe, and Kazakh colonists after they exterminated the Dzungar Uyurut Mongols in the region, with one third of Xinjiang's total population consisting of Hui and Han in the northern R, while around two thirds were Ugas in southern Xinjiang's Tarim Basin. Before 1831, only a few hundred Chinese merchants lived in southern Xinjiang oases and only a few Uggas lived in northern Xinjiang. Critics have argued that the government's response to Uggar concerns do little to address the underlying causes of their discontent. Uggar views by oasis, Uggar views vary by the oasis they live in. China has historically favored Turpan and Hami. Uggas in Turfan and Hami and their leaders like Amin Koja allied with the Qing against Uggas in Altisha. During the Qing dynasty, China enfoffed the rulers of Turpan and Hami as autonomous princes, while the rest of the Uggas in Altisha were ruled by Begs. Uggas from Turpan and Hami were appointed by China as officials to rule over Uggas in the Tarim Basin. Turpan is more economically prosperous and views China more positively than the rebellious Kashgar which is the most anti-China oasis. Uggas in Turpan are treated leniently and favorably by China with regards to religious policies, while Kashgar is subjected to controls by the government. In Turpan and Hami, religion is viewed more positively by China than religion in Kashgar and Khotan in southern Xinjiang. Both Uga and Han communist officials in Turpan turn a blind eye to the law and allow religious Islamic education for Uga children. Celebrating at religious functions and going on Hajj to Mecca is encouraged by the Chinese government, for Uka members of the Communist Party. From 1979 to 1989, 
350 mosques were built in Turpan. Han, Hui, and the Chinese government are viewed much more positively by Uyghurs specifically in Turpan, with the government providing better economic, religious, and political treatment for them. There were 20,000 mosques representing a 5.8 times of increase in total in Xinjiang in 1989. Until separatist disturbances fled in 1996, China was lenient and allowed people to ignore the rule prohibiting government officials from observing religion. New, big mosques have been financially assisted in being built by the Chinese government in Uramki. While in southern Xinjiang China implements strong rules regarding religion, in Uramki, China treats the Uyghurs and religion lax and permissively. Restrictions, in Xinjiang Communist Party members and civil servants who are employees of the government are not allowed to participate in religious activities while ordinary private citizens are allowed to practice religion and fast in Ramadan. Students in public government directed schools are discouraged from participating in religious activities but not banned from doing so. The policy pertains to all religions. Members of the Communist Party are not allowed to carry out Taoist practices like Feng Shui. The suppression of the Uyghurs has more to do with the fact that they are separatist, rather than Muslim. China banned a book titled Crossing Fensu, which insulted Islam and placed its authors under arrest in 1989 after protests in Lanzhe and Beijing by Chinese Hui Muslims, during which the Chinese police provided protection to the Hui Muslim protesters, and the Chinese government organized public burnings of the book. The Chinese government assisted them and gave in to their demands because we do not have a separatist movement. Unlike the Uyghurs, we Muslim protesters who violently rioted by vandalizing property during the protests against the book were let off by the Chinese government and went unpunished while Uyghur protesters were imprisoned. Although religious education for children is officially forbidden by law in China, the Communist Party allows Hui Muslims to violate this law and have their children educated in religion and attend mosques while the law is enforced on Uyghurs. After secondary education is completed, China then allows Hui students who are willing to embark on religious studies under an imam. China does not enforce the law against children attending mosques on non Uyghurs in areas outside of Xinjiang. Since the 1980s Islamic private schools have been supported and permitted by the Chinese government among Muslim areas, only specifically excluding Xinjiang from allowing these schools because of separatist sentiment there. Hui Muslims who are employed by the state are allowed to fast during Ramadan unlike Uyghurs in the same positions, the amount of Hui going on Hajj is expanding, and Hui women are allowed to wear veils, while Uyghur women are discouraged from wearing them. Different Muslim ethnic groups in different regions are treated differently by the Chinese government in regards to religious freedom. Religious freedom is present for Hui Muslims, who can practice their religion, build mosques, and have their children attend mosques, while more controls are placed specifically on Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Hui religious schools are allowed and a massive autonomous network of mosques and schools run by a Hui Sufi leader was formed with the approval of the Chinese government even as he admitted to attending an event where bin Laden spoke. The diplomat reported on the fact that while Uyghurs religious activities are curtailed, Hui Muslims are granted widespread religious freedom and that therefore the policy of the Chinese government towards Uyghurs in Xinjiang is not directed against Islam, but rather aggressively stamping out the Uyghur separatist threat. The Uyghur terrorist organization East Turkestan Islamic Movements magazine Islamic Turkistan has accused the Chinese Muslim Brotherhood of being responsible for the moderation of Hui Muslims and the lack of Hui joining terrorist jihadist groups in addition to blaming other things for the lack of Hui jihadists, such as the fact that for more than 300 years Hui and Uyghurs have been enemies of each other, no separatist Islamist organizations among the Hui, the fact that the Hui view China as their home, and the fact that the infidel Chinese language is the language of the Hui. Even among Hui Salafis and Uyghur Salafis, there is little coordination or cooperation and the two take totally different political agendas, with the Hui Salafists content to carry out their own teachings and remain politically neutral. Reactions Arab countries politically supported China in the OIC with especially Saudi Arabia and Egypt helping China squash any potential anti-Chinese motion by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation on the Uyghurs, Egypt viewed its own internal sectarian problems like China's and Sudan was also concerned about external interference in its internal problems as well, 
while Indonesia had to deal with its own internal Islamists and emphasize that there was no religious conflict but instead ethnic-based disturbances in Xinjiang to calm the situation down. Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt helped China kill off a statement on the Xinjiang situation in the OIC. There has been no public reaction by the Arab League. Saudi Arabia and Iran on the situation and China has built stronger relations with Iran and Saudi Arabia due to their influence in the Islamic world. Malaysia deported Uyghurs back to China at China's request and ignored calls to halt the deportation. Pakistan outlawed the Islamic Jihad Union, Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan and the East Turkestan Islamic Movement in 2013. The United Arab Emirates declared the East Turkestan Islamic Movement as a terrorist organization in 2014. Rabia Qadir claimed that Turkey is hampered from interfering with Uyghurs because it recognizes that its own Kurdish issue may get interfered with by China in retaliation. An appeal for Chinese products to be boycotted by Nyatagun failed in 2009. Infighting between Uyghur separatists, Anwar Yusuf Chirani set up the East Turkestan government in exile. Rabia Qadir accused the East Turkestan government in exile of being agents of China. Timeline equals Early events equals, Some put the beginning of the modern phase of the conflict in Xinjiang in the 1950s. Equals Soviet support for Uyghur uprisings equals, The Soviet Union incited separatist activities in Xinjiang through propaganda, encouraging Kazakhs to flee to the Soviet Union and attack China. China responded by reinforcing the Xinjiang Soviet border area specifically with Han Bingtuan militia and farmers. The Soviets massively intensified their broadcasts inciting Uyghurs to revolt against the Chinese via Radio Tashkent since 1967 and directly harbored and supported separatist guerrilla fighters to attack the Chinese border. In 1966 the amount of Soviet-sponsored separatist attacks on China numbered 5,000. The Soviets doubled Uyghur language broadcast of Radio Tashkent in 1967. The Soviets transmitted a radio broadcast from Radio Tashkent into Xinjiang on May 14, 1967, boasting of the fact that the Soviets had supported the Second East Turkestan Republic against China. In addition to Radio Tashkent, other Soviet media outlets aimed at disseminating propaganda towards Uyghurs urging that they proclaim independence and revolt against China included Radio Almaty and the Almaty published Shurkita one quarter Rukistan of AZ newspaper. After the Sino-Soviet split in 1962, over 60,000 Uyghurs and Kazakhs defected from Xinjiang to the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic, in response to Soviet propaganda which promised Xinjiang independence. Uyghur exiles later threatened China with rumors of a Uyghur Liberation Army in the thousands that were supposedly recruited from Sovietized emigres. The Soviet Union was involved in funding and support to the East Turkestan People's Revolutionary Party, the largest militant Uyghur separatist organization in its time, to start a violent uprising against China in 1968. In the 1970s, the Soviets also supported the United Revolutionary Front of East Turkestan to fight against the Chinese. Bloody incidents in 1966-67 flared up as Chinese and Soviet forces clashed along the border as the Soviets trained anti-Chinese guerrillas and urged Uyghurs to revolt against China, hailing their national liberation struggle. On January 30, 1967, it was reported that in Xinjiang, Guerrilla attacks were being carried out by a Soviet-based Turkestan refugee army. In 1969, Chinese and Soviet forces directly fought each other along the Xinjiang-Soviet border. The Soviet Union supported Uyghur nationalist propaganda and Uyghur separatist movements against China. The Soviet historians claimed that the Uyghur native land was Xinjiang and Uyghur nationalism was promoted by Soviet versions of history on tocology. Soviet ecologists like D. I. Tai Kerner wrote pro independence works on Uyghur history, and the Soviet supported Uyghur historian Tsun Rakhimov wrote more historical works supporting Uyghur independence and attacking the Chinese government, claiming that Xinjiang was an entity created by China made out of the different parts of East Turkestan and Zungaria. These Soviet Uyghur historians were waging an ideological war against China, emphasizing the national liberation movement of Uyghurs throughout history. 
the Soviet Communist Party supported the publication of works which glorified the Second East Turkestan Republic and the Uli Rebellion against China in its anti-China propaganda war. Soviet propaganda writers wrote works claiming that Uyghurs lived better lives and were able to practice their culture only in Soviet Central Asia and not in Xinjiang. In 1979 Soviet KGB agent Viktor Louis wrote a thesis claiming that the Soviets should support a war of liberation against the Imperial China to support Uyghur, Tibetan, Mongol, and Manchu independence. The Soviet KGB itself supported Uyghur separatists against China. Among some Uyghurs, the Soviet Union was viewed extremely favorably and several of them believed that people of Turkic origin ruled the Soviet Union, claiming that one of these Turkic Soviet leaders was Mikhail Gorbachev. Uyghur nationalist historian Turgan Almaz and his book Uyghurla and Uyghur nationalist accounts of history were galvanized by Soviet stances on history, firmly grounded in Soviet Turkological works and both heavily influenced and partially created by Soviet historians and Soviet works on Turkic peoples. Soviet historiography spawned the rendering of Uyghur history found in Uyghurla. Almaz claimed that Central Asia was the motherland of the Uyghurs, and also the ancient golden cradle of world culture. Xinjiang's importance to China increased after the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979, leading to China's perception of being encircled by the Soviets. China supported the Afghan Mujahideen during the Soviet invasion, and broadcast reports of Soviet atrocities on Afghan Muslims to Uyghurs in order to counter Soviet propaganda broadcasts into Xinjiang, which boasted that Soviet minorities lived better and incited Muslims to revolt. Chinese radio beamed anti-Soviet broadcasts to Central Asian ethnic minorities like the Kazakhs. The Soviets feared disloyalty among the non-Russian Kazakh, Uzbek, and Kyrgyz in the event of Chinese troops attacking the Soviet Union and entering Central Asia. Russians were goaded with the taunt just wait till the Chinese get here, they'll show you what's what. By Central Asians when they had altercations. The Chinese authorities viewed the Han migrants in Xinjiang as vital to defending the area against the Soviet Union. China opened up camps to train the Afghan Mujahideen near Kashgar and Khotan and supplied them with hundreds of millions of dollars worth of small arms, rockets, mines, and anti-tank weapons. In the 1980s, there was a scattering of student demonstrations and riots against police action that took on an ethnic aspect. And the Barron Township riot in April, 1990, an abortive uprising, resulted in more than 50 deaths equals late 1990s equals, a police roundup and execution of 30 suspected separatists during Ramadan resulted in large demonstrations in February 1997 which were characterized as riots in the Chinese media, but which the Western media allege were peaceful. These demonstrations culminated in the Gulja incident on 5 February, in which a People's Liberation Army crackdown on the demonstrations led to at least nine deaths and perhaps more than 100. The Aero One Quarter MQI bus bombings of February 25, 1997 killed nine and injured 68. The situation in Xinjiang was relatively quiet from the late 90s through mid-2006, though inter-ethnic tensions no doubt remained. A chain of aggressive and belligerent press releases in the 1990s making false claims about violent insurrections in Xinjiang and exaggerating both the number of Chinese migrants and the total number of Uyghurs in Xinjiang were made by the former Soviet-supported URFET leader Yusubek Mukhlisi. In 1997 the Yulja incident occurred as a result of a series of demonstrations. Equals 2007 onwards equals, in 2007, the world's attention was brought to the conflict following the Xinjiang raid on an alleged terrorist training camp a thwarted 2008 suicide bombing attempt on a China Southern Airlines flight, and the 2008 Xinjiang attack, which resulted in the deaths of 16 police officers four days before the Beijing Olympics. See 2008 Uyghur unrest for further details. On 25-June 26, 2009, the Sherigan incident occurred in Guangdong Province. Further incidents include the July 2009 Aero One Quarter MQI riots, the September 2009 Xinjiang unrest, and the 2010 Xu bombing that led to the trials of 376 people. The 2011 Hotan attack in July led to the deaths of 18 civilians. 
although all of the attackers were Uyghur, both Han and Uyghur people were victims. In 2011, six ethnic Uyghur men attempted to hijack an aircraft heading to Aero One Quarter MQI, but failed after passengers and crew resisted and restrained the hijackers. In 2011, a series of knife and bomb attacks occurred. On December 28, 2011, the Pishan hostage crisis occurred. On February 28, 2012, the 2012 Yusheng attack occurred. On April 24, 2013, clashes in Baku occurred between a group of armed men and social workers, then with police near Kashgar. The violence left at least 21 people dead, including 15 police and officials. A local government official said that the clashes broke out after three local officials had reported suspicious men armed with knives who were hiding at a house in Selabuya Township, outside Kashgar. On April 30, 2014, a knife attack and bombing occurred in Aira One Quarter MQI. Two months later, on June 26, 2013, 27 people were killed in Shanshan riots. Seventeen of them were killed by rioters while the other ten people were alleged assailants who were shot dead by police in the township of LUKQUN. On March 1, 2014, a group of knife-wielding assailants attacked people at the Kunming railway station killing at least 29 and injuring 130 others. China blamed Xinjiang militants for the attack. Over 380 were arrested in the following crackdown and four people were charged on June 30 for the incident in which 29 people were killed and 140 injured. Three of the suspects were accused of leading and organizing a terror group, and intentional homicide. They did not take part in the attack as they were arrested two days before. On September 12, a Chinese court sentenced three people to death and one to life in prison for the attack, in which 31 people were killed and 141 injured. On April 18, 2014, a group of 16 Chinese citizens identified as ethnic Uyghurs engaged in a shootout with Vietnamese border guards after seizing their guns as they were being detained to be returned to China. Five Uyghurs and two Vietnamese guards died in the incident. Ten of the Uyghurs were men and the rest were women and children. On April 30, 2014, two attackers stabbed people before detonating their suicide vest at an Aera One Quarter MQI train station. Three people, including the two attackers, were killed. On May 22, 2014, twin suicide car bombings occurred after the occupants had thrown multiple explosives out of their vehicles at an Aero One Quarter MQI street market. The attacks killed 43 people and injured more than 90, making it the deadliest attack yet in the Xinjiang conflict. On June 5, 2014, China sentenced nine persons to death for terrorist attacks. They were seeking to overthrow Chinese rule, inspired by global jihadi ideology, in Xinjiang. On July 28, 2014, an incident occurred in the towns of Elixku and Huangdi in Shash County. The Chinese state media Xinhua said 37 civilians were killed by a gang armed with knives and axes in Xinjiang, with 59 attackers killed by security forces. Xinhua said 215 attackers were arrested after they stormed a police station and government offices. It said 30 police cars had been damaged or destroyed and dozens of Uyghur and Han Chinese civilians had been killed or injured. The incident is disputed as the Uyghur American Association said that local Uyghurs had been protesting at the time of the attack. On July 30, 2014, the Imam of China's largest mosque, Yumtaya, in the city of Kashgar in Xinjiang, died after reportedly being stabbed after morning prayers for his reported pro-Beijing stance. On September 21, 2014, Chinese state media Xinhua reported a series of bomb blasts killed in total 50 people in Luntai County, southwest of the regional capital, Yurumqi. This consisted of six civilians, four police, and 44 rioters. On October 12, 2014, Four Uyghurs armed with knives and explosives attacked a farmer's market in northwestern China's Xinjiang region, which according to police, left 22 people dead, including police officers and the attackers themselves. On November 29, 2014, 15 people were killed and 14 injured in the aftermath of an attack in the Shash County 11 of the killed were Uyghur militants.
equals Al Qaeda support for Uqa militants equals. One who are we? We are a group of workers for Islam and the Mujahideen for the cause of Allah to save the worshippers from the worshipping of worshippers, so that they can worship the Lord of the worshippers all over, the world in general and Turkistan in particular. This group arose so that its members could cooperate on Tawid and purity and Allah fearing and jihad for the cause of Allah, so as to liberate East Muslim Turkistan from the infidel communist Chinese invasion and repulsing its invasion from religion of the Muslims and their honor and souls and money so as to establish Allah's pure religion, and empowering the Islamic Sharia in Turkistan, and cooperate with the Mujahideen Muslims in the name of Allah all over the Muslim world to restore the wise Islamic Caliphate and empower Allah's Sharia on the world. Charter of the Turkistan Islamic Party, the media center of the Turkistan Islamic Party. Third, working and cooperating with all the jihadi groups for the cause of Allah everywhere, so as to repulse the invasion of the infidel from them, and establishing Allah's Sharia everywhere. A Euro OE say thou, this is my way, I do invite unto Allah, on evidence clear as the seeing with one's eyes, I and whoever follows me. Glory to Allah and never will I join gods with Allah. A Euro Yusuf, 108 Charter of the Turkistan Islamic Party the media center of the Turkistan Islamic Party. If you do not wage jihad, you will never be able to get rid of the oppression of the infidels which makes you abandon the religion and which makes slaves of you. Thus, you will not be able to be rescued from the oppression of this world and the torments of the hereafter, or find eternal happiness until you return to the religion of Allah. Abdul Haq, a commander in the Uyghur separatist movement Turkistan Islamic Party, from a video released by TIP, February 9, 2009. A Euro OE we are, Allah willing, proceeding along this path with all of our strength in order to rescue our oppressed brothers in East Turkistan a Euro, and Allah willing, we are working on rescuing our oppressed brothers from the hands of the communists until we make Allah a Euro unregistered trademark s religion supreme and we live a precious life in the shadow of Islamic Sharia law or else be rewarded with martyrdom in the cause of Allah we are plotting for the Chinese to suffer the torture of Allah, or else by our hands a Euro Abdul Haq, leader of the Uyghur separatist movement Turkistan Islamic Party, from a Euro OE steadfastness and preparations for jihad in the cause of Allah Euro Turkistan Islamic Party, January 20, 2009. A Euro OE anyone who is familiar with the battles that the Mujahideen are engaged in today will know that the path of jihad is the only path to prevent attacks and injustice, against us. And, the suffering of the Americans is on the rise in Iraq due to the operations of the Mujahideen. As a result of these operations, America was forced to withdraw FR from Iraq, and still it has not learned its lesson. Today, it is once again drinking, from the cup of failure in Afghanistan as it gasps for breath, looking to avoid defeat and withdrawal a euro, and now it is fighting the dizziness of death. Those kind of results could never have been achieved with writings and speeches a euro a euro oe meanwhile, with regards to the situation in East Turkestan which was once part of the Islamic nation and is now under the domination of the unjust infidel communists, the confrontation is still ongoing between the Mujahideen and the invading occupiers. And, Allah willing, the operations of the Mujahideen in East Turkestan will make the Chinese suffer just as America suffered in Iraq and Afghanistan, from shame, S.C. Andal, and defeat. In 1997, the Mujahideen of East Turkestan gathered under the leadership of Commander Hassan Masoon beyond the borders of our land, and they were graced by CHU seeing the path of training within the shadow of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan a Euro as they were prohibited and forbidden from doing so in their own country because of the Chinese occupation. We used to be able to live in our land, and we knew the ways of living, but we abandoned our homes in order to support the oppressed and to remove the injustices committed against all Muslims. We left in order to try and gain our sovereignty from communist China, and for the sake of providing our people a carefree and happy existence under the shadow of the Quran and Sunnah. During this period of time, a large number of Mujahideen from East Turkestan received training. Later, during this critical period, the Islamic Emirate in Afghanistan was destroyed at the hands of the Zionist Crusader assault launched under the lead of America. Nonetheless, the Mujahideen of East Turkestan were able to continue their jihadi operations even after the collapse of the Islamic Emirate, thanks be to Allah Euro TIP narrator.
from a Euro OE steadfastness and preparations for jihad in the cause of Allah Euro Turkestan Islamic Party, January 20, 2009. A Euro OE we have to conquer our own country and purify it of all infidels. Then, we should conquer the infidels a Euro unregistered trademark countries and spread Islam. The infidels who are usurping our countries have announced war against Islam and Muslims, forcing Muslims to abandon Islam and change their beliefs a Euro Abdullah Mansour, leader of the Uyghur separatist movement Turkistan Islamic Party, from a Euro OE the duty of faith and support, a Euro Voice of Islam Al Fajr Media Center, August 26, 2009. The East Turkestan Islamic Movement is allied with the Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan along with the Pakistani Taliban and Al-Qaeda. The organization renamed itself the Turkistan Islamic Party and abandoned usage of the name ETIM, although China still calls it by the name ETIM and refuses to acknowledge it as TIP. The Turkistan Islamic Party was originally subordinated to the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan but then split off and declared its name as TIP and started making itself known by promoting itself with its Islamic Turkistan magazine and Voice of Islam media in Chinese, Arabic, Russian, and Turkish in order to reach out to global jihadists. Control over the Uyghur and Uzbek militants was transferred to the Pakistani Taliban from the Afghan Taliban after 2001 so violence against the militants' countries of origins can no longer restrained by the Afghan Taliban since the Pakistani Taliban does not have a stake in doing so. TIPs are to the first Sentot al M media arm has released many video messages. One of the grievances against China by the TIP was that China implemented female and male equality. Al-Qaeda appointed TIP member Abdul Haq al-Turkistani to their Shura Mali. Al-Qaeda also appointed TIP member Abdul Shukur Turkistani as military commander of their forces in the FATA region of Pakistan. Uyghur detainees at Guantanamo Bay have confessed that they were trained by Abdul Haq and Hassan Masum in Afghanistan. Abdul Haq was the leader who threatened terror attacks on the 2008 Beijing Olympics, sits on the Shura Council of Al-Qaeda, and subscribes to the methodology of Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda's command viewed Abdul Haq as authoritative and sent him to meet with Taliban factions along with Al-Qaeda commanders. TIP issued a eulogy for Doku Umarov of the Caucasian Emirate upon his death. For a while after he died, Osama bin Laden's successor was believed by some to be the ETIM leader Abdul Shukur Turkistani because jihadist organizations have been powerfully influenced by ETIM. Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri released a statement supporting jihad in Xinjiang against Chinese, in the Caucasus against the Russians, and naming Somalia, Yemen, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan as places of warfare. Zawahiri endorsed jihad to liberate every span of land of the Muslims that has been usurped and violated, from Kashgar to Andalusia, and from the Caucasus to Somalia and Central Africa. Uyghurs inhabit Kashgar the city which was mentioned by Zawahiri. The TIP has some members of other ethnicities besides the Uyghur, a TIP suicide bomber in Afghanistan who attacked American troops was Nuruddin, a Turkish militant and he advocated that Turks and Uyghurs mount Islamic flags at the White House and Beijing's Tiananmen Square while a TIP Kazakh member named Uspambator made an appearance in a video and said there is a line artificially drawn by the infidel in between us, saying you are from Kazakhstan, Turkistan, Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan, there is a line drawn artificially by the infidel, my brothers. The religion never came only to Kazakhs, it did not come only to Uyghurs, and it did not come only to Arabs. Do not separate. Allah said, you do not separate to say that a Euro you are Kazakhstan, you are Turkistan and you are Uzbekistan a Euro unregistered trademark, the Turkish TIP suicide bomber Naruddin called for expulsion of Crusader, and Buddhist infidels, and called Andalusia, East Turkistan, Chechnya, South Africa as lands of Islam. The Turkistan Islamic Party issued condolences for Taliban leader Mullah Omar upon his death. With the goal of establishing a Central Asian Islamic State, Uyghurs, Chechens, Uzbeks, Tajiks, Kyrgyz Kazakhs, and other ethnicities flocked to serve under Islamic movement of Uzbekistan leader Yuma Namangani. During the Battle of Kunduz in Afghanistan, Foreign Islamist militants like Uyghurs, Chechens, Rohingya, Kyrgyz, Tajiks, 
and Uzbeks joined the Taliban in the attack. The Pakistani Army's Operation Zabazb appears to have driven these foreign militants from Pakistan's northwestern area of Waziristan into Afghanistan. Non Afghan militants like Arabs, Tajiks, Chechens, Uyghurs, Uzbeks, and Pakistanis make up 40% of anti government fighters in Afghanistan, according to Dolat Waziri, a member of the Defense Ministry of Afghanistan. These militants caused a surge in fighting in 2015. Uyghurs, Chechens, and Uzbeks made up the majority of casualties in clashes against Afghan national security forces. A Euro OE Turkista N Al Ila Mayaha Euro issue No. 14 endorsed attacks and killings against Chinese workers and referred to martyrdom operations against a police station and a martyrs brigade. The Turkistan Islamic Party in Syria uses the jihadist Shahada flag with the name of the group in Arabic below the Shahada. Turkistan Islamic Party for the support of the people of Al Sham. TIP in Syria also calls itself by the name of Turkistan Islamic Party in the land of Al Sham. A Jabhat El Nus member named Abu Rabah helped Uqa militants start their first camp in Syria, and a Turkish language website based in Turkey was launched to recruit Uqa Mujahideen to fight in Syria for the Al Qaeda affiliated Uqa Turkistan Islamic Party. TIP sent the Turkistan Brigade to take part in the Syrian civil war, most noticeably in the 2015 Jizral Shugar Offensive. The leader of TIP in Syria was Abu Raida al Turkstani. Abu Raida al Turkstani gave a speech during the offensive in Jizral Shugar, inviting Muslims from East Turkestan to come to Sham in order to kill Nasseri. Abu Raida al Turkstani gave a speech denouncing America and claiming Muslims are oppressed in the land of Afghanistan and in Turkestan, and in Waziristan, and in Burma, and in Bilad Asham in May 2015 in Jizral Shuga the Syrian army killed Abu Raida al-Turkestani near a hospital. TIP members in Syria fight alongside the al-Qaeda branch al nusra Front since TIP is allied to al-Qaeda in Pakistan and Afghanistan and conducted suicide bombings for Nusra Front. Members of TIP have been killed in battle in Syria. TIP eulogized and applauded members of his organization who participated in suicide bombings and members who were killed in action in Jizral Shugar. Members of the group helped other jihadists enforce religious law in Idlib such as wrecking alcohol in stores and this was noted that with a Euro OE support of Allah and by the strike of the fist of the Mujahideen from the al Nusra front, Arar al-Sham and Turkistan, a Euro that they undertook these actions by a Syrian jihadist and Jesh al-Fatih. A Jabhat el Nusra jihadist called Abu Muhammad al Ansari, interviewed by Vice News after the Idlib offensive, said that the battle was good, praise be to God. The brothers from all the groups started working together and coordinating. Each faction is responsible for a side. The majority were immigrant brothers from Turkestan. They are the ones who attack the important points. The spokesman of Jabhat el Nusra Abu Maria al Khartani claimed that Muslims were oppressed in Turkestan, and that Nusra needs to defend them. TIP joined in on the jihadist offensive in the Al A plain along with Al Qaeda affiliated Jund al Aksa against the Syrian army, referring to the Syrian army by the disparaging name Mujari. The Turkistan Islamic Party and Jabhat el Nusra launched a joint operation which overran the Syrian military's Abu Dhuar airbase. The Turkistan Islamic Party's Islam Awazi released photos of its fighters in Syria. The Uyghur Turkistan Islamic Party and the Taliban allied Uzbek Imam Bukhari Jamaat and Al Qaeda allied Uzbek Katibat El Tawid Wal Jihad, along with Jund al Aqsa, cooperated together in the Al A plane to conquer multiple crucial villages, with the TIP engaging in suicide bombings in Jizral Shukar and its participation in overrunning Abu Dhuwa with Jund al Aqsa and Al Nusra. The Turkistan Islamic Party released photos of their Uqa fighters at Abu Dua. A mass execution of 56 captured Syrian soldiers was carried out by the Turkestan Islamic Party along with Jabhat el Nusra at Abu al Dua. After the Russian military intervention in the Syrian civil war, photos of Uqa fighters from Turkistan Islamic Party were released with captions in Arabic that said a Euro O standing up strongly to the Nujari army and the Russians a Euro. In response to the Russian-backed offensive by the Syrian army the jihadist Turkistan Islamic Party sent fighters to the Ab Plain to support rebels in fighting against the Syrian army.
Iranians, and Hezbollah forces. One of Saif al Shishani's fighters in Jabhat el Nusra claimed that a united faction called al Muaddirin was formed out of the unification of the Uyghur Turkistan, Uzbek Abu Salya and al Bukhari, Alu Suna Wal Jamay, and Jesh al Muaddirin Wal Ansar. Katiba Turkistan joined with Arar al Sham, Jabhat el Nusra, and Jannad al Sham against the Syrian army in the battle for Jizr al Shugar. Arab news agencies reported that the Uyghurs in TIP, the Chechens in Jannad al Sham, Jabhat el Nusra, and Arar al Sham are being coordinated by Turkish intelligence to work with the Army of Conquest. Syrian churches have been demolished by Turkistan Islamic Party Uyghur fighters, who exalted in the acts of destruction, and in Homs and Idlib battlefields the Turkistan Islamic Party cooperated with Uzbek brigades and Jabhat el Nusra, Jabhat el Nusra and is compete with each other to recruit Uyghur fighters. In Jizr al Shagara Church's cross had a TIP flag placed on top of it after the end of the battle. The Turkistan Islamic Party has participated in besieging the Shiite villages for a Euro unregistered trademark A and K for E. The village of Ar Sambaki in Jizr al Shagar's countryside has become a base for a massive amount of Uyghur Turkistan Islamic Party militants and their families in Syria, estimated at around 3,500. Military camps in the area training hundreds of children from these families. Hezbollah media, Iranian media, and Syrian government media accused Turkish intelligence of being involved in transporting these Uyghurs via Turkey to Syria, with the aim of using them first in Syria to help Jabhat el Nusra and gain combat experience fighting against the Syrian army before sending them back to Xinjiang to fight against China if they managed to survive. The Syrian political analyst and Arab nationalist Talb Ibrahim accused Turkey of trying to demographically alter areas of Syria by sending in Turkic peoples like Uyghurs, Turkmens, and others to take over whole villages after ethnically cleansing the Arab locals, accusing Turkey of neo-Ottoman and Turkish colonialist policies towards Syria and trying to take parts of Syria from Arabs. TIP's Islam Awazi encouraged entire Uyghur families including women and children to emigrate abroad to perform jihad. Turkish connections were used by Uyghur fighters to go into Syria and the humanitarian Uyghur Eastern Turkistan Education and Solidarity Association which is located in Turkey sent Uyghurs into Syria, endorsed the killing of the pro-China Imam Umater, applauded attacks in China, and posted on its website content from the TIP. On a communique dated to Wednesday, 9th of Dual Hijal 1436 here at TIP's Islam Awazi media arm stated that this year is drawing to a close and we thank Allah for what he has blessed us with conquests, victories, and glory. We your brothers the Mujahideen of Turkistan are continuing in the liberation of the land of Al-Sham and proceeding in our jihad for the sake of Allah to liberate every last inch of the land of Al-Sham, with permission from Allah. Al-Qaeda included an article in its magazine Resurgence promoting East Turkestan independence titled A Euro OE Did You Know? 10 Facts About East Turkestan A Euro The article was written with errors and false claims such as claiming Quranic education was banned, and included other claims such as East Turkestan has never been a part of China, and it was independent of China for more than 1,800 years, in 1949. 93% of the population of East Turkestan was Uyghur while 7% was Chinese, and that after the communist takeover in 1949, more than 4.5 million Turkish Muslims were killed by the communist government, with Al-Qaeda calling for the occupied Muslim land East Turkestan to be recovered, into the shade of the Islamic Caliphate. As part of an effort to reach out to foreign Muslims, on the Ink of Swords network, an Arabic language magazine titled Islamic Turkistan was issued by ETIM on January 2009 and it described ETIM as a group of workers for Islam and the Mujahideen in the cause of Allah in order to liberate Turkistan, and said that the aim of ETIM was to establish an Islamic caliphate in the light of the Book and the Sunnah, in the cause of Allah, promotion of virtue, prevention of vice, and the call to Allah to create an Islamic state by means of jihad. Fellow Al-Qaeda aligned Islamist organizations with the aim of a worldwide Islamic caliphate cooperate with TIP whose own goal is an Islamic state, with TIP fighting against the militaries of Syria and Pakistan in addition to China and being assisted by Central Asian, Gulf, European, 
and North American-based outfits and the TIP leader Abdullah Mansour used the words Mujahideen and Jihadi operation in a Uyghur language video produced by TIP's Islam Awazi at the first center al Ila M Media Center when TIP took responsibility for the 29 October 2013 Tiananmen Square terrorist attack. Islam Awazi released a video called We Are Coming O Buddhists a Euro of a TIP-affiliated rowing new cleric named Cheikh Abudur a Euro Azam who also called for the killing of Buddhists in addition to Chinese, saying in Arabic that killing you, slaughtering you, and cutting off your heads is all good, kill you, spill your blood, cut off your head is a good thing, the unedited message said we are Muslims, and you are our enemies O Buddhists and Chinese, you will not see us and killing you and spilling your blood, and cutting your heads of, all of it is good, inshallah on February 24, 2014, he also said we are a nation that loves death while you are a nation that loves wine and women, and we are coming inshallah, we want to kill Buddhists to the east of this land and to the west of it, he also said those Chinese Buddhists, their small eyes, flat noses, judgment day will not come, until we attack them, judgment day will not come, until we slaughter them. Judgment Day will not come, until our war with them and attacking them. In the Turkistan Islamic Party's Turkistan al Islamiyya magazine, issue 13, Abu Dhor Azam congratulated the Tsarnaev brothers on their terrorist attack in the Boston Marathon bombing, saying in the very house of unbelief, two Chechen brothers destroyed the infidels fortresses on April 16, 2013. During the ensuing search, by the authorities for the perpetrators, the elder brother died as a martyr in the field of glory and honor, Allah willing. The younger brother, Zakar, remained, and told his dear nation, we did this operation as revenge for what America does in Palestine, Iraq, and Afghanistan. He didn't mention his homeland Chechnya, since this jihad is a jihad of, an entire nation, not, a campaign for the liberation of a single land. The Muslims' lands are one and their honor is one. Abu Dhor Azam called upon Muslims to attack Germany, China, and Burma, saying, Rise O servants of Allah to help your brothers and sisters. Rise to save your sons and daughters. Do your best in jihad, O guardians of creed and, monotheism, against the enemies of Allah the idolatrous Buddhists, and target the most important installations of Burma, China and Germany and their interests and the interests of the United Nations, which supports these massacres and this genocide in Arakan. Abu Dora Euro Azam featured in a video released by TIP titled A Euro OE We Have to Empower Islam in the Depths of Our Hearts A Euro. Islam Awazi released a video showing burqa-clad women being militarily trained by the Turkistan Islamic Party with guns and RPGs. Camps training children for jihad are being run by the Turkistan Islamic Party in Syria. Aga child soldiers being instructed in Sharia and training with guns were depicted in a video released by TIP. A video of a training camp in Waziristan in Pakistan's tribal areas showing children being trained with weapons was released by the Turkistan Islamic Party's Islam Awazi. TIP released a video titled A Euro OE Message to the Mujahida N of the Caucasus A Euro. TIP released a video titled A Euro OE Advice to Our Muslim Brothers in Turkey A Euro. The TIP in Syria released a video series called Lovers of Paradise. The TIP in Syria released a video series called Blessings for the Strangers. In the second video of the series, the leader of TIP in Syria Abu Rida al Turkstani read out a document with an Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan letterhead detailing the history of the founding of the Turkistan Islamic Party by Hassan Masum and East Turkestani immigrants, when they moved to Taliban-controlled Afghanistan, gave allegiance to Mullah Omar and founded the organization. The TIP in Syria released a series of photographs titled Pictures from the Land of the Epic Battles. TIP also released photographs under the Turkish title Nadia Sirilla. TIP's Islam Awazi released a visual Nashid titled Wake Up O Muslim Umma. The end of the Nashid video featured TIP fighters burning a Syrian flag, the burning of a portrait of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, and footage of the September 11 attacks on the World Trade Center, with the Uyghur language subtitles of the Nashid referring to the Kefla, when the destruction of the World Trade Center towers was shown on the video.
TIP's Islam Awazi released a visual nasheed titled Return to Your Religion. It was announced that TIP's Voice of Islam Media would be solely released on Twitter, Shamak, and Fide via the Global Islamic Media Front. TIP released a Nashid a Euro Oe the Sacrificer of Self the God a Euro. TIP released a Nashid a Euro Oe if I was killed a Euro. TIP released a Nashid a Euro Oe told from me, oh my for there a Euro. TIP released a Nashid a Euro Oe or giving to the Lord a Euro. TIP released a Nashid a Euro Oe you should realize, oh his mother, verily your son is in the way of God a Euro. TIP released a Nashida Euro OE Lions of Turkistan R Euro. Equals ISISISIL support for UGA militants equals, the terrorist organization Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant released a video featuring an 80-year-old UGA man who came to join ISIS in Syria along with his grandchildren, wife, and daughter after he was inspired by his son who died in combat in Syria. The video featured Uga children singing about martyrdom and a 10-year-old Uga child threatening China, saying, O oh Chinese Cub 4, know that we are preparing in the land of the Khalafa and we will come to you and raise this flag in Turkestan with the permission of Allah Euro the old Uga man said I made her raw accompanied by my four grandsons, my daughter and my wife. Turkish passports were used by Uggas who were seeking to contact Mujrid in Indonesia to more, a pro-ISIS organization in Sulawesi in Indonesia. The Turkish-run English-language news news agency reported that the Turkish Maidan newspaper discovered that Uggar fighters joining ISIL were being helped by businessman Norali T, who led an Zeytinburnu Bernu district-based network in Istanbul, which produced counterfeit Turkish passports numbering up to 100,000 to give to Uggars from China and help them go to Turkey form where they would enter Iraq and Syria to join ISIL. Uggers from China travel to Malaysia via Cambodia and Thailand and then travel on to Turkey, since a visa is not needed for travel between Turkey and Malaysia, then staying at locations in Istanbul, and then going to Iraq and Syria by traveling to southeastern Turkey. The information was revealed by AG who participates in the network. He noted that even though Turkish authorities are able to detect the fake passports they do not deport the Uggers and allow them into Turkey. AG said that, a Euro OE Turkey has secret dealings with the Uyghurs. The authorities first confiscate the passports but then release the individuals a Euro after Thailand deported Uyghurs back to China whom China suspected to have been on their way to Turkey, Syria or Iraq to join Jihad. John Kirby, a United States State Department spokesman, slammed the move and said Thailand should allow those remaining ethnic Uyghurs to depart voluntarily to a country of their choice. Equals 2015 anti-China protests in Turkey equals, on July 4, 2015, a group of around 2,000 Turkish nationalists from the Grey Wolves linked Nationalist Movement Party protesting against China's fasting ban in Xinjiang mistakenly attacked South Korean tourists in Istanbul, which led to China issuing a travel warning to its citizens traveling to Turkey. This event negatively impacted China-Euro-Turkey relations. Devlet Bahar Section Eli, the leader of Turkey's Nationalist Movement Party, said in a statement that the attacks by MHP-affiliated Turkish youth on South Korean tourists was understandable, telling the Turkish newspaper Hurriyet, what feature differentiates a Korean from a Chinese. They see that they both have slanted eyes. How can they tell the difference? Another translation of his remarks was, what is the difference between a Korean and a Chinese anyway? They both have slitty eyes. Does it make any difference? Equals 2015 Bangkok bombing equals, the 2015 Bangkok bombing is suspected to have been carried out by the pan-Turkic neo-fascist Turkish ultra-nationalist organization Grey Wolves due to Thailand's deportation of Uyghur terrorist suspects back to China instead of allowing them to travel to Turkey for asylum. A Turkish man named Adam Karadag was arrested by the Thai police in connection to the bombing with Turkish passports. Bomb-making materials were found in his apartment. The Grey Wolves are described by the media as a terrorist group and became famous for their assassinations and killings of journalists, liberals, and leftists in Turkey. Their member Mehmet Ali Akar's assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II, 
and their involvement in the Nagorno-Karabakh war and the Chechen war due to the Muslim and Turkic populations of those areas since their aim is the unification of all Muslim Turkic peoples into one state spanning from Central Asia to the Balkans. Casualties Over 800 people have been killed in the conflict either directly as a combatant, or indirectly as a victim of terrorist attacks. In 2014, about 500 people have been recorded killed as a result of the conflict. See also, Human Rights in China, Chittagong Hill Tracts Conflict, Persecution of Buddhists. References Equals Citations Equals Equals Sources Equals, Bella Copyright Ohan, Ildikar Cubed, Ed Situating the Uggers Between China and Central Asia. Ashgate Publishing, Limited. ISBN 0754670414. ISSN 1759-5290. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Bovingdon, Gardner. The Uggers, Strangers in Their Own Land. Columbia University Press. ISBN 0231519419. Burns, John F. on Soviet-China Border, The Thaw is Just a Trickle. The New York Times. Retrieved May 12, 2014. Clark, Michael E. Xinjiang and China's Rise in Central Asia, A History. Taylor and Francis. ISBN 1136827064. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Dickens, Mark. The Soviets in Xinjiang 1911-1949. Oxus Communications. Retrieved May 12, 2014. Dylan. Michael. Contemporary China, An Introduction. Routledge. ISBN 1134290543. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Dylan, Michael. Xinjiang, Chinese Muslim Far Northwest. Routledge. ISBN 1134360967. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Forbes, Andrew D. W. Warlords and Muslims in Chinese Central Asia, A Political History of Republicans in Kiang 1911-1949. Cup Archive. ISBN 0521255147. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Kadir, Rebeer. Dragon Fighter, One Woman's Epic Struggle for Peace with China. Alexandra Cavelius. Kales Press. ISBN 0979845610. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Liu, Liang H. Wang, Xiaogang, Ed's Nationalism, Democracy and National Integration in China. Taylor and Francis. ISBN 0203404297. Retrieved March 9, 2014. Makaras. Colin. Professor and Head of School of Asian and International Studies Colin McCurras. Chinese Ethnic Minorities and Globalization. Routledge. ISBN 1134392885. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Mian, Lieutenant Colonel Dallas L. Ethnic Minorities in the Soviet Military Implications for the Decades Ahead. A University Review. Retrieved May 11, 2014. Millward, James A. Beyond the Pass, Economy, Ethnicity, and Empire in QING Central Asia, 1759-1864. Stanford University Press. ISBN 0804729336. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Millward, James A. Eurasian Crossroads, A History of Xinjiang. Columbia University Press. ISBN 0231139241. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Nathan, Andrew James. Scoble, Andrew. China's Search for Security. Columbia University Press. ISBN 0231511647. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Reed, J. Todd. Rashk. Diana. The ETIM, China's Islamic Militants and the Global Terrorist Threat. ABC Clio. 
ISBN 0313365407. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Rudelson, Justin John. Rudelson, Justin Ben Adam. Oasis Identities, Uga Nationalism Along China's Silk Road. Columbia University Press. ISBN 0231107862. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Ryan, William L. Russian's Back Revolution in Province Inside China. The Lewiston Daily Sunday. Pages 3. Retrieved May 12, 2014. Star, S. Frederick, Ed Xinjiang, China's Muslim Borderland. Emmy Sharp. ISBN 0765613182. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Svanberg, Anvar. Westerlund, David. Islam Outside the Arab World. Routledge. ISBN 1136113304. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Tinabai, Ken Jolly. China and Kazakhstan, A Two-Way Street. Bloomberg Business Week. Pages 1. Retrieved May 12, 2014. Tinabai, Ken Jolly. Kazakhstan and China, A Two-Way Street. Gaz to KZ. Retrieved May 12, 2014. Tinabai, Ken Jolly. Kazakhstan and China, A Two-Way Street. Transitions Online. Retrieved May 12, 2014. Wang, Gung Wu. Zheng, Union, Ed's China and the New International Order. Taylor and Francis. ISBN 0203932269. Retrieved March 9, 2014. Wayne, Martin I. China's War on Terrorism, Counterinsurgency, Politics and Internal Security. Routledge. ISBN 1134106238. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Wang, John. Zheng, Union, Ed's China's Post Jiang Leadership Succession, Problems and Perspectives. World Scientific. ISBN 9812706050X. Retrieved March 10, 2014. Central Asia Monitor. Contributor Institute for Democratic Development. Central Asia Monitor 1993. Retrieved March 10, 2014. AP. Turkestan Refugees Report Raids on Chinese Xinjiang. The New York Times. Retrieved May 12, 2014. UPI. Radio War Aims at China Muslims. The Montreal Gazette. Pages 11. Retrieved May 12, 2014.